So welcome to another edition of Shut the Front Door with Sean Jennifer. Today, my guest is Mr. Aaron Edwards. Yes. Mr. Aaron Edwards. He's an actor, comedian. What else do you do? Do you write and direct as well? I write, yeah. Direct. Oh. Um, looking to produce. Nice. Yeah, the whole night. Nice. You got to do it all nowadays. Yeah, you do. They ain't playing. You do. <laughs> I'm doing this show, and it's so out of my comfort zone, but That's I right. thought I'd give it a try. I feel like I'm about to be uncomfortable with these questions, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous about Don't this. be nervous. It's, it's phrases, it's things you've heard of. So it's okay. about, the show is about idioms. Okay. And an idiom is a word or phrase that can be taken figuratively or literally. literally. Right. Yeah, so. The fact that you even have to explain idioms, though, is like, <laughs> that's how you know. This is about to be a show right here. And so we're going to break down that uh, phrase or word. Okay. Um. We're going to break it down to the etymology of it, mm. the origin Come of it. Come on and preach. We're going to try to. All right, let's do it. Some of them are kind of um, myths. Okay. They may not be accurate, but it's a possibility that it's true, and okay. that's the origin or how it started. So let's we'll just it. see. We will see. All okay. Right. So do you box? Um, not if I don't have to. Not these <laughs> days, man. I can't afford a black eye. Mess around, miss a callback. <laughs> oh, don't, we don't want to miss a callback. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. So, I asked you if you box because uh -huh. I'm sure you've heard the term "Saved by the Bell." Of course, yeah. So, tell me what does "Saved by the Bell" mean to you? Was well, a show from the '90s. So. <laughs> <laughs> Good if one. If I wake up in the morning. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Good one. No, but Saved by the Bell means that... Uh, you used to like much, Lisa, didn't you, on Saved by the Bell? Um, was her name Lisa? I, Lisa, but she like screech, so I was like, she lame. So then... That's the black girl, right? That is the black girl. But okay. I was like, who Who would... But you know what? Jesse, after like I became... Like when I became an adult, I was like, Jesse is kind of fun. <laughs> Jesse's the She one started playing all these roles that I was like, is that Jesse from Saved by the Bell? Hold on, she was showgirl, right? Yeah, she did. She did oh, some roles. Jesse, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so back to the actual phrase "Saved by the Bell" and not mm -hmm. the TV show. The phrase "Saved by the Bell" yeah. is when a boxer has you in the corner, working you out, and then the bell rings and you got saved by the bell because you would have got knocked out otherwise. Right. It's a, a last-minute rescue. Uh-huh. Last-minute rescue. And tell me, do you know where this term came from? You think it's from boxing, or you think it, it's hmm. from something else? It's probably from something else. And if I had to say something, it would be, I don't know, you was about to get a whooping, and then <laughs> somebody called your mom and the said, The phone rang just in time? By the bell. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so back in the day. Uh-huh. How far back? 19th century. Okay. Good question. <laughs> Good question. So in the 19th century, <laughs> some people were buried mm -hmm. and they were still alive mm. because they could have been in a coma, Oh. had a bad seizure. Right. Who knows? They were like in a death-like state. Right. So they started making coffins. Mm, with with a bell. bells attached. Oh my gosh! So. <laughs> but who's sitting out there waiting? Like, the groundskeeper. They, the groundskeeper. You know when they cleaning the grounds at night or whatever, cutting the grass right. or digging up a hole to put in another coffin. They may hear the bell ring. But them were small towns back then, so if the groundskeeper didn't like you, oh, you're going to stay in the ground. Yeah, you, <laughs> <laughs> you're not coming out. <laughs> You are not coming out. That's interesting. Wow. Yeah. And it's, I don't know if that's true, but that's the research that I found. <laughs> it sounds like it could be. It sounds like it. Yeah. And it's also another term, um, dead ringer as well, but that's for another show. Okay. That's for another show. And since you are an actor, uh -huh. the next three idioms I think will be appropriate for you. You think so? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. All right. So, break a leg. Do well. Do well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do Which I don't like, because I'm a former athlete, so when people like, break a leg, I'm like, that's not. Where did you play? Basketball. Basketball. Mm -hmm. What position? Point guard. Mm, nice. Yeah, nice, nice. small, so. Is LeBron the greatest? 
Ever? Ever. No. Who's the greatest? Michael Jordan. Michael Jeffrey Jordan. On the court. Off the court. No. <laughs> Mike is one of the worst individuals in the world. <laughs> Rumor has it, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not think LeBron is the greatest? No. See, basketball is 90% mental. Michael Jordan's a mental giant. And his footwork allowed him to do things that other players couldn't do. Okay. Only player to ever have better footwork than Mike was Kobe. LeBron or Kobe? Um, I'm taking Kobe. I think LeBron is in incredible, though. LeBron's the best. Let me tell you this. LeBron is the best athlete any sport has ever seen in terms of just straight, raw talent. He's the most talented dude ever. Okay. Hands down. That must be what I see. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not a... Sports person? Mm -hmm. Hands down, he is. Okay. And I love how what he does off the court. I think he's, oh, yeah, he's more a than good on the court. Guy. Good yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love his, his family. Yeah. I, you know what I love? What? When they won at Cleveland and I was watching the celebration, mm -hmm. he literally, like, his kids was acting up on the float and his wife, Savannah, got acting. Okay. Okay. And she should. And I was like, that's how, he, that means he let her get down. Like, he let her take care of what she needed to take care of. Right. And it just, I was like, that's a family. And they're not spoiled, bratty no, children because they get family. put in that's check. That's a real family. Exactly. I was like, that's all right, Brian. <laughs> Come on, Savannah. <laughs> good, good. Black love. Yeah. All right. So, break a leg. What did you say? Break a leg means do well. Okay. Yeah. Wishing someone good luck. Mm -hmm. Typically used in theater by actors or musicians before mm -hmm. going on stage. So where do you think this this uh, idiom, what, what do you think the origin is? Probably sometime in slavery oh. when the master made mm. a slave <laughs> dance. He would be like, go out there and break a leg. <laughs> but he meant it. <laughs> Aaron, oh my God. No. What is it? No, no, no. In the so, 16th century. <laughs> 16th century. Actually, I, I, it may be Shakespearean time. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. But it's, it's superstition, of okay. course. It is, um, it's, it's you wishing someone good luck. Okay. It's just the opposite. It was common for people back then to believe in ghosts and spirits. Mm -hmm. And the ghosts and spirits would be in the theaters or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so if they heard you ask for something good, they'll try to make the opposite happen. So Haters. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> the other <laughs> actors or cast and crew would say break a leg instead of good luck. Okay. Or do well because the spirits would try to, you know. Wouldn't do nothing with that. That's exactly. interesting. Exactly. They tried to outsmart the spirits. Very superstitious. By making something good happen. That's extremely superstitious. Which brings us to our next one. Okay. <laughs> that is also based on a superstition. Knock on wood. Okay, so that's saying... Have you ever used that term, knock on wood? No, but I've seen You've people do it You've never used it? All... No, I don't believe in that. But I've seen people do it all the time, and it's funny every time I see it. <laughs> Why? As if wood is going to help you not do whatever, whatever it, is it is that you're trying to do. <laughs> like, I see people doing that all the time. Like, you hear weird stuff like, man, me and my girl, I don't know. We might be, what, did you pull out? No, but <laughs> knock on wood, you know? Knock on wood is not going to stop that <laughs> Not pregnancy. at all. That baby's coming. <laughs> no pun. Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, so yeah, that's what it is. That's pretty much the meaning. Okay. To touch wood or knock on wood is superstition. It's a superstitious act mm -hmm. to ward off any evil consequences or bad luck. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Where'd that come from? You tell me what you think. Let me see. I tried to trick you right no, there. No, it's not going to work. <laughs> that's not going to work. Knock on wood had to have come from... The Lumberjacks, Paul Bunyan. <laughs> That's a Paul fable. Paul Revere. What is that? Okay, Paul Revere. Yeah. Okay. Paul Revere. Uh-oh, somebody here? Oh, no, that's just my fault. Okay. So somebody wanted to steal his wood. Somebody wanted to steal his wood. So what? He... And he was like, I'm about to knock you upside the head. Okay. And that's from not... <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is where... One of the, there's two possible origins. I'm just going to go with this one. All right. So, pagan Europeans mm. 
They believed that hostile, <laughs> hostile and evil spirits inhabited wood. Mm -hmm. So if, it's pretty much the same thing as the break a leg. Okay. So if you wanted something positive to happen, you would just bang on the wood while you're talking to someone mm -hmm. and hoping that the spirits that's in the wood oh. didn't hear you. Exactly. My goodness. Exactly. So, yeah, they would knock on wood to mm -hmm. prevent spirits from hearing it and possibly preventing your hopes from coming true. Wow. Yeah. Oh, they needed Google back then. <laughs> they needed Google. <laughs> <laughs> Google is the truth. <laughs> they also would... They also would bang, on, knock on wood to chase away evil spirits from their homes and trees or to prevent them from hearing about... Look, stop texting me. Okay, they would... Hold on, where was I? To prevent them from... Prevent them from hearing about and ruining a person's good luck. So, yeah, it's all superstitious. I wonder how that worked out for them. Yeah, they're probably in the trees now. In <laughs> the trees. Right. Why trees, though? Oh, no, that's weird. Trees ain't done nothing to nobody. Right? They give us oxygen. Right. We need trees. Yeah. We need trees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> and this is our last idiom. Okay. Aaron. Which is bust your chops. Bust your chops. Okay. You so, bust chops. You're a comedian. I bust chops. I'm a comedian. So... Yeah. So it's more than, I guess, just being a comic. It's like directing, uh, I guess, funny energy towards an individual. So you are making fun of somebody. Okay. Yeah. Is that the only definition you have for it? Um, it could be that. It could be um, playing a joke on somebody. Mm -hmm. It could be... Okay. Yeah. But for the most part, when somebody says, don't bust my chops, it's like, don't get at me. Don't get at me. Don't give me a hard time. Yeah, a hard time. Me. Right. Okay. What you got? It's literally, it means to hit someone in the face. Mm. But it's commonly used as to give someone a hard time. Okay. All right. So, and the chops is anything around the mouth. The okay. jaw, the teeth, parts around the mouth. So those are your chops. Okay. Back in the day, men used to wear beards like that, and they called them choppers or pork chops. Okay. And it's because it kind of looked like pork chops on their face. Right. I'll Weird. Show you guys. Is he woke? Maybe he was woke back then. <laughs> he was all woke. The brothers getting... he, was, he was very he was woke. woke. That's all that was. He was very woke. <laughs> so yeah. So where do you think where do you think that came from? Um, well, I pretty much just told I you. I guess though. yeah, it came from punching somebody in the face. Yeah, in their chops. In their chops. Yeah, the men's sideburns were very long. They were called mutton chops or lamb chops. Okay. That's it. See, I told you I was gonna get you to get me one. Yeah, you did. You <laughs> did. You tricked me. I did. You tricked me. You used your evil powers. I know from the trees. Because I didn't knock on wood. I knocked on him before I came. See. Yeah. I should have knocked on wood first. I should have knocked on wood first. So, you proposed to your wife on stage? I did, yeah. You did? I did. How romantic. Well, it was, the it was um, a year prior to that. We actually met shooting a pilot. Oh, okay. And um, that night, I was like, hey, y'all, I'm doing the improv. I was doing Spike's night. So, I was like, anybody who wants to come can come. And she was the only one that showed up. Yeah, Aww. so she came, and uh, at the time, I didn't have any money. So I saw her at the window, and I hid. Are you serious? I did, because I was like, if she don't have the money to get in, then <laughs> she just can't see me, because they haven't given me my So you was So you wasn't interested in dating her then? No, I didn't, I didn't. You didn't know? No, I didn't know. Oh, okay. But she was a beautiful girl, so I was yeah. like, okay, she came. That's Aww, what's up. Aw, sweet. So I did my thing. She got off. She, I mean, we talked for a minute, and then... I kept basically being like, yo, we got to go over these parts. Uh -huh. She was playing my girlfriend. Oh. But my girlfriend that was ratchet and didn't like me. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we okay. had to go over that. So then a year later, I was like, let's... Full circle. Yeah, full circle. And you proposed to her at the same time. Proposed the same place. Oh, nice. Yeah. And you have... Totally surprised. You... She was totally surprised? Mm -hmm. Or were you surprised that you proposed? Hilarious. No, no, no. <laughs> she was surprised. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. You have a joke... 
My memory's horrible. Okay. But it's a joke about your wife. Uh-huh. Ah. Just give me the baby. What is it? We're, we're fighting over the... Yes! Uh, yeah. <laughs> Aaron has an amazing joke. When you're in L.A. or whenever yes. on the road, you need to come see him. He is hilarious. Do it. He you can follow hilarious. me at A.E. Comedy. I put everything on that, what I'm doing, where I'm going, so... A.E. Comedy? A.E. Comedy, yeah. At A.E. Comedy. Is at that for e. IG, Twitter? And yep, same thing. Uh -huh. Facebook, Aaron well, Edwards? Well, Facebook is Aaron Edwards Hall. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Well, guys... Thanks for stopping by for Shut the Front Door with Sean Jennifer and my lovely guest today, Mr. Edwards. <laughs> it's been real. See you later. Oops. For instance, do, is there a phrase or term that you use a lot and you know the actual origin of it? Like for instance, it's raining cats and dogs. Or to take a shot. Did you know that the term to take a shot came from Western times? Uh, a cowboy would go into a saloon and if he didn't have money to give the barkeep to pay for his drink, he would in turn give the barkeep one bullet. And what is one bullet? It represents one shot. In exchange, he will get a small amount of liquor. So what's your idiom? Talk to me. Inbox me right here or, you know, post it down there. <laughs> Inbox me or post it. Thank you.